practice. That's it. Okay, am I on now? Well, I'll start this again. Good morning. My name is Dick Hyde. I'm the first vice chair, and Miley, unfortunately, is out of town and can't be here with us today. So, so I don't know if we have a quorum or not. We'll find out after, after introductions. If you're, once you introduce yourself, uh, please let us know if you're a member or not. And I think a quorum is six members if we have to vote on anything. So let's find out. So Dick Hyde with Community Intersections, uh, welcome. We'll go ahead and move to my right. Brian Champion, Mountain Metro Transit. Yes, voting member. There we go. Gotcha. Good morning. Karen Teal with Drive Smart Colorado. Good morning, Ted Schweitzer with the City of Cobble Creek, and I am a voting member. John Carroll, Special Kids, Special Families. Are we voting member? You are. We're a voting member. <laughs> <laughs> Jolene Hausman, Fountain Valley Senior Center, voting member. Victoria Salser, Silver Key, voting member. Phil Van Horn and Vito, voting member. And the guests back here, do you want to introduce yourselves or are they our honor on our guests later on? Do you want to introduce them now, everybody? Or wait till we yeah. introduce them? Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Let's introduce yourself then. Now, that does not mean an insult to you non-drivers over there, okay? You're all, everybody's welcome. Right. So uh, go to item number two. Do I have a, uh, a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. So moved. Any public comments that are not on the agenda at this time? Yes, ma'am. Hi, folks. So I'm Melissa Martz, and I am the program development staff person here at the PPACG. And I am going to be taking over the administration and kind of management of the MCC from Jessica. So just wanted to get in front of you guys and actually mention that today. And then I also have two announcements that I wanted to share. Uh, the first is we do a podcast at the Pikes Peak Area Agency on Aging. Some of you guys may know that. Um, some may not. And we have one coming up next week uh, on, yeah, it'll be next week, on transportation. We had Miley Gray and Terry Cassidy do a podcast with us talking about the services and the resources that they do around transit. And then we're always looking to do more podcasts. So if you have a subject that you'd be interested in sharing with us, uh, please let me know. But I wanted to hand these out and remind folks that you might want to check these out. It's on Studio um, Radio 809 and a lot of really great resources on there and fun to listen to and they're about 30 minutes a piece. Question? Could you tell us who Terry works for and what her role is? So Terry Cassidy, uh, she has her own company. She is a, she was the occupational therapist with I think it was Penrose St. Francis or Memorial Hospital and she does the the driving evaluation program for folks that are older to find out if they are still safe to drive their own vehicles. And so I'm forgetting what her what the name of her company is right now. I can't quite bring that back up, but that is her company and what she does. And then the other thing, yes, Dick? 
do you have a regular schedule for the podcast or just as you find somebody? So we do it as we find folks, as people kind of approach us. Right now we are booked with podcasts through April, but we are always recording so that we will always have podcasts to put out. We put out two a month, so and we could actually end up doing more than that, but right now we do two a month. So, yeah, come to us with ideas because that's how we keep it rolling. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to share, I had a gentleman who called me, and he runs a host home. He has two folks with disabilities that live with him, and he's had them for, they're a family. They've been living together for years. And he is looking for opportunities to engage his folks in the community more. He wants to do volunteer driving um, with people and give folks rides to places. And so I'm hoping that there are some people in this room who might have some thoughts and ideas for me to help him make that happen. And so please reach out to me. I'll be meeting with him on Friday and would love to be able to connect him up to offer his services and resources um, out there to help get folks um, where they need to go when other opportunities for rides are not always available. So those are my three announcements. And I look forward to kind of working with you guys more. And the podcast, this will be on the table in the back for you guys to take when you head home. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Yes, ma'am. to make sure that this group know I'll sit down, that we have a legislative um, group off of the board of directors that we work with legislative uh, issues that we're tracking that have to do with the five uh, pillars that PPCG deals with, uh, aging, military, transportation, air and water issues. Um, and those are, so if you see a bill of one of those issues um, that we might not be aware of or we might need your opinion on, that would be great. I know there was one we were discussing on Monday that had to do with 65-year-old people aging out of Medicaid and into Medicare and losing some of their benefits, and I'm not sure everybody there was understanding the importance of it and willing to take a position on it or not. So I, I'm looking right now, and I'm not seeing the bill number. I'm sorry, so you'll have to look it up. But um, you can just go to Colorado Legislative and put in, like, Medicaid, and the bill number would pop up for you. But um, if there's anything there, we're willing to take, uh, try to take positions as a board, write letters, go up and testify, um, anything to try to keep these issues. So uh, obviously transportation is one of your key issues you're working on. And, and um, so we do, right now we're meeting every other Monday. Uh, towards the end of the session, we'll meet every Monday. In the last month, we'll probably We'll be meeting two or three times a week just because how fast everything goes. So um, please let us know. You can um, norms. Uh, n um, you can contact myself, or you can contact Jessica McMullen if with any information that you might have would probably be the easiest. You have our contact info. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other public comments? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jolene Hausman, Fountain Valley Senior Center. So we've always been under the wing of El Paso County, and they've graciously given us emails, web hosting, phones. And I'd like to say, as of January 1st, we're proud to stand on our own two feet, and we've grown up. And so we have our own website now that's still under construction, but it's www.f as in fountain, v as in valley, s as in senior, center.org. And all our emails have changed. And our new phone number, our main number is 719-600-2644. And our transportation number is 719-600-2643. And so we're super excited with the new technology and just the ability to grow. Well, congratulations to Fountain Valley. That's good. Any other comments? Let's move to the next item on the uh, agenda is officer nominate, um, nominations. I've just said all, all three of our officers have agreed to stay in position. Is that correct? Did I say that correct? Okay. You know, I, I remember making that statement. Apparently I did. So... But if anybody wants to make other nominations, we're going to make the nominations. And voting will be on next month. Is, is that one? No, you can vote today. Oh, the, today. oh okay. There will be the presentations. Be, oh, okay. You your, yeah, because we do have a quorum, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I All would right. do it. Okay. No, I was just going to move that we approve this light. I would like to nominate Julian Hausman for chair of the committee. 
you accept? I accept his nomination. Okay. Okay, so do we have to have Miley here? Can we vote on that today? Because we have two people going for, for the same position, right? I think that Miley would be fine. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll go on that advice then. So, Sharon? Well, I'll have to with withdraw. Then are we going to vote individually? And that's fine for each officer. Yeah, I, I think we have to do vote individually now since we have mm -hmm. two people working for the there. So, now, having not familiar with the Roger... I say Roger Ranger because I'm a military guy, but I know that's not right. <laughs> Robert's, uh, Robert's Rules Rob, of Orders. Yeah, Ro Roberts Rules of Orders, yeah. So, so, so... How would so we do have to do this in secret, or to, can we do it by by hand by hands? Okay, all those in favor? Of, okay. Can I call for a vote right now? Do we no, need a first, second? First, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll second. I'll second. Okay, you'll second. Okay, that, that'll work there. All right. So now, can I call for a vote? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm glad I have the permission. <laughs> can I have a hand vote for all those in favor for voting for Julie as the chair of? Jolene, as the chair of the uh, MCC, please raise your hand. I don't think I have to hold a second go for the. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jolene, congratulations. When is that effective? Next month? Yes. Okay. Again, congratulations. Today, but let's not yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. And so that's all those, all those in favor as me as the first vice chair, please raise your hands. And then Miley would be the second vice chair, if I remember correctly, right? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of Miley as the second vice chair, please raise your hand. All right. Good. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you for volunteering. Okay. And let's see, the this discussion on the transmit mobility guides. I don't know who has information about that. Who has the information about that, you know? The mobility guides? I am currently still working on it. This is Victoria from Silver Key. Okay. So, um, still send me updates, um, and then I believe it's in talks with PPACG as far as printing it. Okay. Is that the correct guide that we're discussing? Yeah, and um, just to add on to that a bit, um, so the structure of specialized transit is going to be changing in the future where we're going to see some funding housed in PPACG instead of some of the other governmental agencies as a main pass-through to the nonprofits to streamline the process and funding opportunities. So until we get that all hammered out, it's probably best to not necessarily spend money on printing of the new guide until we figure out what that process is going to be because we don't want to throw good money away if we're going to be restructuring the phone number or something down the road. But this, this bodes well for every writer and every agency here. Um, it's going to make application processes for funding easier, housing of all funds easier for specialized transit, all under one roof. Um, it's going to be pretty amazing, and we haven't really seen this across, like, it, it's consolidating into a much easier fiscal management, ride management, and cohesion among the nonprofits. Do you have a self-imposed deadline on that or anything like that? When do you think you can present it to us? June, at the latest, because that's one of the deadlines for changing some of the funding. Right now we're going through some processes on just fiscal management right now and gathering some of the things together. But um, so far, all the nonprofits and Mountain Metro Transit have been working really cohesively together in this transition with PPACG, and I think we're just going to see opportunities abound in the community and um, easier technological solutions for everybody as well, including very small nonprofits with very small budgets, being able to hop on board with some of the bigger ones to work out easier solutions. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any uh, discussions to add to that? Could I just add that it would be really great to have the mobility guide sometime this summer, like printed and completed, just because of the senior expos that kick off in the fall, and it would be great to have those for, for the area. So thank you. Yeah, as soon as we get the database worked out and the phone number, because that's going to be perfect timing to hit people with the new information on how everything works, so it 
the timing is well on board, and we're putting a lot of pressure on the database company. We kind of stalked them in their office in Atlanta last month. All of us went and just kind of made camp, and we're making some awesome changes. Yeah. Well, good. And thanks for your stalking. I appreciate it. But I do fast. <laughs> And I think the next thing on the agenda is a special kids, special families is, is on for uh, presentations this morning. Went off. There it is. There it is. John with uh, Special Kids, Special Families, uh, Development and Communications Manager. Our uh, Director of Transportation, Shikaki Youssef, is here today as well. Um, our mission, promote, strengthen, and support individuals with special needs, their families, their caregivers. We um, were established in uh, 1998, started out with Zach's Place for Children. And that is for kids two and a half to 18 with uh, various disabilities. Zach's Place is off of 30th Street on the west side. And we do have three vehicles there as part of our transportation program. Uh, child Placement Agency. We offer child placement throughout. We can do that throughout the entire state of Colorado. Foster care placement and um, a lot of times it eventually leads to adoption as well. That office has moved in next to our admin office off of Aerotech Drive near the airport. Adult services, we created that as well for people 18 on up through seniors with special needs. We have, it's a two-part program. Joey's Place is center-based. And we've got folks that come Monday through Friday, 9 to 3, stay in the center. We have ICANN, which is Integrated Community Accessibility and Networking. They come Monday through Thursday, same hours, but once they arrive and, and get squared away, they get back on the vans, go out in the community, and, and do a variety of activities and socialization and interaction and some volunteering. And again, these are folks 18 on up through seniors. Our host home program, we provide care for adults with disabilities. We have 40 to 45 host home providers right now that have people staying with them. Many of those folks do use our adult program as well. Transportation is what we're here to talk about today, but one other new program I just want to mention, we're offering behavioral health services now, ages four and above, up through adult, individual, family, group counseling, all sorts of mental health therapies there, and uh, that is for people with or without disabilities, and we offer that in English and Spanish. So a uh, great new addition to our programs here. Fifteen vehicles. We had 16, but we sold our old reliable recently. Uh, we have five Ford E-Series buses, four Ford Transit vans. You see two are wheelchair capable. Six minivans broken down between a Toyota Sienna, Dodge Caravan, and Honda Odyssey. So uh, quite a fleet there. And uh, what we like to say is we provide support where support is needed. We have clients who use Metro Mobility, Envita, some of the other services. But for those who don't have access to those rides, um, we can provide door-to-door pick them up in the morning, drop them off after the program. And then again, we have the ICANN group, which goes out in the community. We have five drivers just dedicated to our morning and afternoon routes, getting the clients to and from their homes. And then our adult mentors, our staff, um, many of them are also trained to drive the vehicles as well. And again, I, we have three vehicles at Zach's Place for the kids. A lot of before and after school transportation, 
outings, and, and Zach's place is seven days a week from anywhere from 6.30 in the morning till 8 o'clock at night, not typical daycare, very specialized and um, organized around the parents' schedules. Most of our clients uh, receive some sort of medical, Medicaid disability waivers and things like that, but as many of you know, uh, that doesn't come anywhere near covering the cost of our services. So transportation is a very expensive program for us. We seek a lot of grants, and a recent grant we got was from the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. We solicit donations. A recent donation is through the uh, Mountain View Electric Association Operation Roundup, which is a great one to apply for if you haven't heard of it. Um, they, they are very generous. <laughs> we um, take donations, uh, anything like that we can get. We run seven round-trip bus routes daily, Monday through Thursday. About oh, more than 300 rides per week, which gets us up to about 15,000 rides annually. Uh, the lowest vehicle mileage at last count, 21,500, and the highest more than 270,000 miles. Uh, you know, it's a lot of money goes into keeping those running and maintenance. And in addition to our drivers for our adult rides, we also have a ride-along position that's not really funded, but we want to have that extra body on the van just so the driver can focus on driving because we do have folks that, uh, as I said, you know, we deal with a population with special needs, so anything can happen. We cover a pretty broad area from Northgate to the north to a little south of Fountain, all along the west side, and uh, currently out to Peyton. Our Zach's Place drivers, and again, those are staff members that drive those vehicles, um, we're not affiliated with one particular school district. We go, uh, again, all over the area, uh, wherever they need. And again, that's a, a great you know, burden off the parents. So parents can just drop the child off with us in the morning. We can take them to the school or maybe they're in an autism program or something like that. Uh, oh, well, there's a quick look at some of our beautiful just washed vehicles all uh, posing for the camera. And um, yeah, that pretty much covers the transportation program. So I can go right on into our driver recognition and kick that off. And we are recognizing Daniel Bell, who is here today. And I'll read what Daniel's uh, supervisor wrote. Daniel has been with SKSF for oh, about six months now. Since the first day he started, he has been an overachiever. He's always on time and has perfect attendance. He has a great working relationship with all the staff and clients, and everybody likes him. Daniel is a very quick learner. He does his job and other tasks without being asked. Daniel is also a very safe driver and has excellent vehicle knowledge. Five stars all the way around. So we'll start off the recognition today with our driver, Daniel Bell. Thank you. Can I ask John a question about his agency? Sure. Do you have any awesome fundraisers coming up soon, John, <laughs> that you want to tell us about? Oh, gosh. Funny you should ask. Uh, March 7th, it's our annual Bowlathon. We, um, we take over Kingpin Lanes off of North Academy for an afternoon of bowling, all 24 lanes. 
It's a Saturday. It's, uh, it is a fundraiser. We have a lot of uh, businesses and sponsors and donors, and a lot of families come out. Our clients bowl. We have a team from Zach's, two teams of adults. So, uh, yeah, we're looking for sponsors. We're looking for bowlers. We're looking for donations for drawings and, and uh, prizes and things like that. And uh, Bowlathon is our next big fundraiser. And then the other big one is uh, Night of Comedy in October. Uh, more on that at a future date. Thanks, Jolene. <laughs> Coming. I'm going to start with recognizing the driver for the city of Fountain. Um, we do house Fountain Municipal Transit, and Chris Glowman is here to accept the award on their behalf. She supervises the drivers. The city of Fountain is honored to name Roy Wojtek as, and I didn't say his last name right, as Transit Driver of the Year. In his two years of dedicated service, he has displayed all the attributes of a genuine team player. Ray's attendance record is outstanding. He continually goes above and beyond duty expectations and is always ready to fill in and help out. Ray offers input, insight, and innovation to improve operations and, of course, customer service. He is also a recruiter on Transit's behalf, using his connections in the community to reach out when a new driver is needed. FMT riders know him by name and always speak highly of his service and kindness. Ray is a jovial soul with an infectious laugh. He can be somewhat of a prankster, which adds some levity to our days. Ray is highly regarded by his teammates, which is indeed an honor. Team is the heart and soul of FMT. Thank you, Ray, for all you do. The driver of the year for Fountain Valley Senior Center Transportation is James Myers. We see the effort that he puts into his job and we know that his efforts are appreciated. He, uh, we also know that sometimes in the hustle and bustle of the day, we may not always show our appreciation effect, uh, as effectively as we might want to. James is asked to train new drivers. He is very detailed with his training, which is important for every driver to be prepared. James starts his day training new drivers with the story of his first days. Two hours, into a his, two hours into his training, a call came through to bring him back to the senior center. What was waiting for him was a running vehicle and a crash course in how to use the tablet, and we sent him on his way. We had an emergency, and James did well with his first crisis and all crises that have followed in the last five years. People are, are and always will be our greatest asset. Your abilities and contributions are an important key to success for our entire operation. And I do want to add one other thing about James, that he's actually helped all of our agencies this year. Um, James and our other driver, Les, when you guys drop people off at Memorial Hospital, they used to only say we could use one location. Um, that violates the ADA all over the place. If the doors are ADA accessible, the client gets to pick which door they want to go into. And through Les and James' efforts, now paratransit and specialized transit are allowed to use every single ADA entrance, drop-off, and pick-up point at Memorial Hospital. And UC Health actually changed their internal policy to reflect this. So without James's contribution to that, we would still be using that one really lame location of picking up and dropping off. So thank you, James.
All right. So for uh, this year's MCC driver recognition, Silver Key would like to honor one of our volunteer drivers. Um, we will be honoring Paul Hansen. Paul Hansen has been a dedicated member of our team since 1987. If you don't know that, that's 33 years, because that's how old I am. <laughs> Paul understands our mission and is dedicated to helping us achieve it. Paul is a retired school teacher and a football coach and began volunteering at Silver Key during school vacations and other breaks in his schedule. We found that he had a knack for the service and that he easily developed a rapport with our clients. Upon retiring in 2006, Paul put us on his regular schedule and we are sure glad that he did that. Each week he comes in and each week Silver Key is better for it. Clients like the service he delivers and at the office, um, he is what they call in football a good locker room influence. Not only did Paul volunteer 150 hours last year for transportation, but he also volunteered for our Meals on Wheels program driving and driving for the American Cancer Society. Uh, we are at Silver Key are glad he is on our team and we our clients appreciate his dedication and work just as much as we do. Thank you, Paul. On behalf of Invita, I'd love to recognize Eric Heisel as our driver. I actually met Eric at my previous employer. Um, we had established a relationship with Invita to help us out with some rides for about a month, and Eric was the driver that they sent over to help us. So I met Eric at their office, and he seemed great. And uh, he just hit the ground running first day, um, did nothing wrong, did everything perfect. He was better than a lot of our drivers. Um, and that just speaks to me of Eric's flexibility. Um, he's, he can do anything you ask him to do. Um, he's always on time. He never calls off. Um, everybody loves him. Uh, and I'm so grateful to have him on my team. So thank you, Eric. Um, proud to recognize you today. Good morning. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, the driver from Metro Mobility, William Camacho, Jr. Um, I'm going to call up Matt Hefner. He's the general manager of TransDev, our contract operator, as well as his staff. They're not going to get away with <laughs> not getting up here. Please introduce them, but I would like to say a few things. I had a chance to ride with William a few months ago. Um, he, to me, represents the best a driver could be. And in my view, it's, it's that balance between being very polite, being very friendly, uh, have a real consciousness of safety. William, you need to come up here. Yeah. <laughs> um, adhere to the schedule. You know, just a very professional driver with safety first and a lot of customer service uh, a close second. So with that, I'd like to introduce Matt. You can introduce your staff and then William. Hello, I'm Matt Hefner. I'm the general manager uh, for TransDev, and we run the Metro Mobility program for the city. Uh, with me is Ramona uh, Collins. She is our dispatch supervisor. Uh, Tanya Franklin is our operations manager, and of course, William. Uh, William's been with us a little over with the program a little over five years, and uh, he really is the ideal driver. And what I mean by that is, he focuses on safety and customer service. And as a driver, you can't ask for anything more. Um, he is also one of our behind-the-wheel trainers, so he is uh, ensuring that uh, new drivers uh, have all of the skills that they need so that they can be successful before we put them out on the road. Uh, and 
And Brian really said it best uh, after he rode on the bus with William. He said he is, uh, William is an ambassador for not only TransDev, but also for the MMT program. So. Let's get a wire to tell us a little bit. Um, Teller Senior Coalition is very proud to have Mark as an employee um, and as our Transit Driver of the Year. Mark has been with Teller Senior Coalition since May of 2015. Um, he provides door-to-door -door transportation and is our primary fixed bus route driver. Uh, Mark is extremely reliable, always goes the extra mile for Teller Senior Coalition and our clients. Uh, Mark maintains a CDL license, drives for Durham School Services for the Woodland Park School District. Uh, Mark has received numerous compliments uh, and personal appreciation notes from our clients. He always has a positive attitude, makes our clients feel safe and comfortable during their transportation, and he does a lot of training with our new drivers. Um, we're extremely lucky to have Mark on our team. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We'll go ahead and move on to the agenda. But to all the people that are honored today, I personally would like to thank you. As a driver and a manager, I can tell you the driver job is a much harder job. <laughs> you're dealing with, with the public, and when they're in a bad mood and you're not in a bad mood, you better get yourself in a good mood. So, <laughs> but yeah, so congratulations to everybody else. And some of them I see you driving around community intersections. And, uh, and uh, let's keep up the good work, and let's have a good year this year. And agenda number eight is a, any information sharing or coordinating opportunities or upcoming training that anybody has. I have two, Dick. Um, first, I would like to thank PPACG and the RAC. They just issued the carryover funding. And for the agencies sitting at this table, that meant over $200,000 combined for more assisted and regular transportation for the specialized transit level as well as a new vehicle for Fountain Valley Senior Center. Our average age of vehicles like over 30 years old. They're, <laughs> they're pretty bad. Um, so thank you so much to PPACG and especially the PPACG board, Sharon Thompson, hiding behind the pillar. Um, they helped streamline the process this year. So the um, RAC had the board's full support, so we won't have to wait as long this year in executing those funds. So it was amazing just the cohesion and streamline of the process, and it was a lot less funds than were being requested, so it was not a good time picking and choosing. So we just really appreciate um, funding on behalf of all of our agencies. And my second point that I'd like to point out is for those of you that have kept up with the 2045 transportation plan for the region, um, we kind of made a lot of headway this year for specialized transit. In the past, specialized transit has also included paratransit. And from a federal funding standpoint, um, paratransit and specialized transit are two totally separate beasts. So this year um, in the plan for 2045, Paratransit is included in the fixed route system, which is where it is funding-wise and legality-wise, and specialized transit is completely focused on above and beyond transportation this year. So our populations are getting um, more attention to those funding sources. So thank you for everybody that helped with that. 
Anybody else? Yes. On behalf of Invita, I'm very excited to announce that we are beginning service on our second rural fixed route service this Friday, the 31st, which will be servicing Rush, Yoder, and Ellicott um, three times a day um, between those three locations and the east side of Colorado Springs. I have a bunch of rack cards I can hand out with the schedule if anybody is interested or I can answer any questions. Is that five days a week? It's starting off as Monday and Friday, or sorry, I said that wrong, Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday and Friday, okay. Correct. Three runs a day, Wednesday and Friday. I also have information about our existing fixed route between Callahan, Peyton, Falcon, and Colorado Springs, if anyone is interested in that as well. All right, wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. That is, that's a nice thing. Good, good. Well, well needed, if I may put in there. So, Anybody else? Hi, Drive Smart Colorado is going to be bringing out the 2020 older driver guides, hopefully by the spring. They're just being kind of finalized and taken a look at, make sure we've crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's, and then we're going to try to get them to the printer. We are trying to get the funding to get them translated into Spanish because we have had a lot of requests for that for the older drivers who speak Spanish. So we're working on trying to make that happen as well this year. So just want to let you guys know about that. Also, please feel free to um, invite us, coordinate with us. If you ever do safety fairs, you need car seat checks, um, you want a car fit at your location or with your population, happy to do that. And we can also do car fit for your drivers as well if they'd like that. So thank you. And thank you, drivers. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Anybody else? Moving on to item number nine, future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, I, 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 is a calendar going around next month, or for, or is it going to be emailed out for for presentations? The plan is for us to have it ready and hand it out at the next meeting for people to sign. Okay, okay. So, and come. Yeah. yeah, come pen with hand, volunteer, so uh, we can do that. Does anybody have anything else we, before we adjourn for uh, the, the cover that hasn't been covered so far? Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Do I have second. second. Adjourned.